Hey guys, Dantix here, back with another Wonderlands Guide video. Today talking about the Burr Reaver, which is a combination of the Graveborn and the Berserker class. This build is insanely tanky, but has the potentially largest nuke in the entire game. Using the Graveborn's ability, Dire Sacrifice, you deal dark magic damage around you. However, it also sacrifices 40% of your current health to deal 150% of that health as bonus damage. This gets nutty when you factor in just how many ways we can drastically boost our health. So you'll be tanky as hell, but absolutely exploding things around you. Meanwhile, you have dark magic damage boosts, which will not only be healing you, but be making sure you can dish out the pain between die sacrifice cooldowns, which will be low as every kill you make cuts the remaining cooldown time, boosts your health, and heals you. This build can manage Chaos Rank 20 as it dishes out the pain, can take it, and has two ways to prevent death. So in this video, I'll be running through your ability, what skills and attributes you'll be investing into, and what items to look for. Like always, I want to showcase the build at a lower, more achievable stage, and only showcase entertaining builds. With the right gear, you can take most builds to Chaos Level 20, but it's all about having fun along the way. There are combinations that are broken right now, but all of them are kind of boring. So let's get right into something more fun. The primary class I chose was the Berserker, but you can pick the Graveborn. The only difference is which you want to keep if you decide to respec, as you can't repick your primary. I went with the Berserker as my primary, as I enjoy multiclassing with the Spore Warden, as per my last video. The Berserker brings with it a powerful class feat called Rage of the Ancients. Every time you activate your action skill, you get bonus frost damage for an enraged duration. Depending on what skill you pick up, you can also get other bonuses as well. Since frost damage is relatively meaningless to us, rage is a means to buff unyielding and iron scroll more than anything. We aren't using the Berserker for its class feat. The same with the Graveborn actually. The Demi Lich Companion is nice for a little extra damage and distraction and to redirect damage with Dread Covenant, but isn't a core part of the build. Instead, we are looking for key skills in both these class skill trees. We want to aim to get to the capstone of the Berserker tree as soon as possible, so we start by putting 3 points into Unyielding. It's normally an underwhelming regeneration, but with the amount of health we have, it heals quite a lot. Then we need to dump the remaining 2 points into either Savagery or Ancestral Frost. This is the point of the build where you need to decide if you want to forego a Dark Magic Focus and focus on Frost instead. If you want to use the overpowered weapon Liquid Cooling, you'll need to put points into Ancestral Frost, Icebreaker and Cold Snap, and then you'll be ignoring Mortal Vessel and Dark Pact in the Greyborn Tree in favour of other skills. However, for this video, we'll be leaning into Dark Magic, so dump 2 points into Savagery. Then max out the old ways. Die Sacrifice wants you to be in the center of the action, so you'll be boosting your damage output by a whopping 30% most of the time. Also, that damage reduction is nice as well since melee enemies will also be up close to you and therefore be dealing 30% less. Then we put a point in arguably the glue that holds this build together, Unarmored Defense. It reserves 50% of your ward in order to give you 150% of the reserved amount as health. Remember the higher your health scales, the higher the scaling damage output of Dire Sacrifice. For those not following, say you had a 100 health. The Dire Sacrifice would take 40 away and deal a bonus 60 damage to enemies. 40% of 100 health is 40 and 150% of that is 60 damage. So if your HP went up to 200, you'll be dealing a bonus 120 damage. So with 10,000 HP, you'll be dealing a bonus 6,000 damage, and you'll have well over 10,000 health easily with Unarmored Defense and a fat ward, not to mention the boosts you're about to get with the rest of these skills. This is why this build feels like you drop a nuclear bomb on your enemies. Moving on, we put 3 points into Blood Frenzy. We will be sacrificing health and rely very little on our ward, so restoring 15% of our huge HP pool every time we kill is amazing. The Enraged Duration increase is a bonus. Now we have one extra point. I chose to dump it into Savagery again for the Enraged Duration increase. Sadly, there really isn't much to benefit from the extra point in the first three tiers at this point. We now max out Ancient Fury as it both pumps up our already huge HP pool by 20%, all this percentage scaling working exponentially, and it gives us a 25% increase to area damage, which Dire Sacrifice happens to do. I don't need to explain why this is great for us. Now we have some extra points before the capstone, so pick up Relentless Rage. It extends the duration of Save Your Soul, making those later Chaos levels cake. It also gives us an enraged effect when we get back up. 
then pump 4 points into Iron Squall, boosting our fire rate by 12% or 24% when in rage, which has benefited like Unyielding has from those rage duration boosts. Finally, we get Blood of the Fallen, the skill that makes it so you can die a sacrifice almost constantly. When you get a kill while it's cooling down, the remaining cooldown is reduced by 20%. Die Sacrifice has a 25 second cooldown, so a single kill will knock off 5 seconds. Now we head over to the Graveborn Tree. Pump 5 points into Mortal Vessel. It not only boosts your maximum health, it boosts your dark magic efficiency, both things we need for this build. Move on down to Dark Pact and put 5 points here. It just straight increases your dark magic damage by 20%. This also includes your weapons, melee and spells so naturally we'll want to lean into this. We can put points into Stain of the Soul but spell damage and casting spells isn't really what this build is about, instead we stay on the same tier and put 3 points into Sanguine Sacrament. This gives us a 15% health regeneration per second when we cast a spell. I know I just said spells aren't our thing but health is, so it's nice to get that regeneration every time we cast instead of relying on the spells for damage. Then with the extra 2 points, put 1 into Dread Covenant. It makes it so 35% of the damage you take is redirected to your Lich. You won't really need the little guy so it's fine if he takes a few hits for you. Also, if you were to reach 1 HP before your Lich, it will cop the death blow over you. Along with Relentless Rage and your massive HP pool, you'll be impossible to keep down. With that last point, I opted to get Dark Hydra. We will be killing things, which has a 60% chance to summon a Hydra that does dark magic damage. More points into the skill won't increase the chance, and we haven't invested in companions, so it's the most bang for a single point you can make. This brings us to Ascension. For the remaining 3 points, we get a massive boost to maximum health, stacking up to 10 times every time we kill something. I have gear that boosts up to 10% per stack, Making it so at 10 stacks, I have a 100% increase to maximum health. That almost doubles Dire Sacrifice. This also gives us more spell damage, so it's a little side effect. Uh, okay, I guess you could invest 5 points into Stain of the Soul instead of Sanguine Sacrament, Red and Hydra, but 20% bonus dark magic spell damage doesn't seem to help me much. Okay, so those are the skills you'll need to invest into to get this build rolling. As you can see, there are quite a few that combo together to increase your health and therefore your dire sacrifice damage. Along with the dark magic boost and your regen, you're a force on the battlefield. Before showing that off though, let's look at attributes and gear. Attributes wise, it goes without saying you need to max out your attunement and constitution, which you do first is really up to you. Constitution gives you the most bang for your point out of any attribute. Gearbox knowing it's not as fun boosting your survivability, well, usually not. With your remaining points, get either Wisdom for the status damage, Dark Magic status damage healing you, or Dex for the crit. I personally went into Wisdom for the extra damage and tank. In terms of background, you almost always want to be going for Village Idiot. I've said this before, but an 8 increase to strength is worth sacrificing 3 intelligence, which you won't be using. That's a net 5 point gain. You can also pick up Recovering Inventory Hoarder, but I don't really like the loss to Dexterity and Constitution for an only 5% skill cooldown. Don't convince yourself ever that Rogue Alchemist is a good idea for this build, it's too much of a health sacrifice. When it comes to gear, you absolutely want to pump up your Graveborn power over your Berserker power. Berserker power gives you nothing you really use, where Graveborn power boosts your dire sacrifice damage as well as other things. You want a powerful dark magic damage weapon. I used Ruby Spite for a long time. You want anything that increases damage output, like this enchant on my melee weapon. On Spellcast, increases dark magic damage by 30% for 5 seconds. I haven't re-rolled my items here for more relevant enchants, just so I don't dominate Chaos Rank 1 for the recording of this too hard. But at level 40, you should have enough moons to re-roll everything. For rings, ability damage boosts are a must. This one also increases effects by 100% when a ward is not full, and it never is thanks to unarmored defense. You want to be looking for ability and dark magic damage. In terms of your ward, you want one with the highest capacity. Like I explained in the last video, the way Unarmored Defense works is that it wants the largest number to give the largest health boost. This one reduces maximum health but makes up for it with a huge ward conversion. You want armor that boosts your key skills and you want an amulet that boosts dark magic damage and graveborn power. This one also reduces action skill cooldown rate 
as you get through chaos ranks you'll find better and better items that boost these stats and you'll be viable all the way through to chaos rank 20. Be sure to keep different damage type weapons with you for dark magic resistant bosses. Liquid cooling being a nice choice. It changes to a core choice if you invested more in frost than in dark magic. In terms of spell, anything with a low cooldown and a dark magic damage focus. So how does this class play? Well, you want to get as many kills as possible on small minions, which will drastically buff you up. You can do this by getting into the middle of packs and launching off your dire sacrifice. Then you can unload your ammo into priority targets. Getting up in enemies' faces is recommended as you'll be taking less damage and dealing out more. So don't be afraid. You'll have extreme regeneration as long as you keep killing, casting your spell and ability, and spreading the dark magic around. You won't melt bosses like some other combinations, but they won't be able to kill you either. So that's the Burr Reaver. Hopefully it made you a Burr Lever. <laughs> Sorry. Hopefully that didn't cost me a like and a sub, but if it did, let me know down below. I'd also love to hear what you're all playing. For everything Wonderlands and RPG, keep it on deck. Ciao.